So Pusha T went on the Drink Champs the other day. And he respectfully called Jay Prince a liar. BBN, Jack Frost, what's up, party people? All right, so I'm usually a little bit long-winded, so I'm gonna get right to the, I'm gonna get right to the point. I'm gonna tell y'all what I think about it after I just tell you what the point is. Pusha T has just called Jay Prince a liar. Yep, a liar. Now he didn't do it disrespectfully. He wasn't like that nigga lying. But what he did say was, okay, hold it. Let me explain what the whole conversation was about first. All right, so remember Jay Prince is going around talking about how, you know, he single-handedly squashed the beef. Whether y'all realize this or not, he is basically saying he single-handedly squashed the beef. Uh, whether y'all get this or not. He, he never really said, you know, I called up Pusha T's people. We had a conversation, and then we decided not to do it. He's saying, well... Drake has a diss record that can end everybody's career. And so I told him not to drop it. So, you know, I single-handedly basically squashed the beef, stopped the beef. Because in reality, Pusha T can come out with something else. But, you know, when you're playing fair in hip-hop and there's a rap beef going on, one song is released, then another song is... One song is released by one artist, then the other artist releases a song. Then the, then the first artist released the song. Then the second artist released the song. Then the, like that. That's how it goes. That's another reason why I did not like the whole Drake Meek Mills thing. Because Drake won off of the one verse he put out. The one jump off he put out. And then he put out another one. It was unnecessary. It's overkill. It's like, you know, when you got the... When you got the... When you got the person, you double tap him to the chest. And, you know, you hit him in the head. Like, I guess that's what Drake was going for. I guess that's what Drake was going for. But then after you do that, you chop the head off. It's overkill. <laughs> anyway. Pusha T is saying that the way that Jay Prince is stating the story, Jay Prince is not being honest. He's adding things. I'm not I'm not 100% sure he's saying he's omitting anything, but he's saying he's adding anything. Some some things. So, recently, Pusha T was a guest on the Drink Champs. For everybody that doesn't know, Noriega, Nori, N-O-R-E, you know, Super Thug. All right? That was a dope-ass song, not for nothing. For everybody that don't know, look up that Super Thug shit. She was dope. The video was dope, too. Like, when that came out, like, Nori killed... I think it came out, like... I forget if that came out in the summer or the fall. But when that came out, like, he was killing it. Like, those couple of months... I think, um... Capone was in jail at that time. I think Capone was locked up at that time. That's when just the Nori album came out. Nori was killing it. Like, that was... That shit was the jam. Not for nothing. And you know it was a long time ago, because I'm calling it the jam. Anyway... So Nori had uh he has a show Drink Champs and um you know it's a you know talk show or whatever. It's a podcast. So two um push it I was about to say two podcast. So Pusha T shows up on the podcast and they talking to him. So Pusha T says that the, the chain of events actually kinda didn't go the way that Jay Prince said they went. He said Jay Prince never said that Drake had a diss track. Why is this important? Some people might say. Especially like the Drake fans. They're like, why is that important? Why is that important? We know Drake got the track. We don't know that the track exists. But that's not what, what's so important about the fact that Jazz, um, pardon me, that Jay Prince said that there was a drink, the uh, a track, and he's telling everybody in the world that there's a track, and he's making it sound like he spoke to the um, good music people and let them know that there was a track, and then that's kind of when the beast subsided. Because if he didn't mention the track, it's a totally different situation. For those that don't understand. 
by mentioning the track, it makes it sound like there's a possibility that Good Music was scared of Drake. By not mentioning the track, like if he if he didn't come out and say, well, you know, Drake has a track. If he just came out and was like, well, you know, I called them up and squashed the beef. That makes it seem like they didn't want no smoke. Two totally different narratives. Totally different. So Pusha T is basically, see, my position is I don't think Pusha T want to let this go. I think Pusha T has some stuff that he wants to, that he wants to let, he, he has some shots he want to fire, and he's just hoping that Drake stick his head up out of that damn hole. He's hoping that Drake is like, anybody ever seen Caddyshack? You know how they have that damn, that damn uh, gopher, and he's like popping up in Caddyshack and all the time, like whack-a-mole? He's hoping that freaking Drake pops his head up so he can whack him. Like I'm telling you, that's what he's, he's hoping, he's praying, because the the tone that the story of Adadon had, the tone was was precision. So he wasn't he wasn't erratic with it. He was calm, very calculated. It just feels like there's more. It just feels like there's more. So Jay Prince, who, come on now. Let's be honest. I mean, the 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 book he's coming out with is called like the science of respect. It's something like that. Like, so we don't look at Jay Prince as a guy that you know he doesn't have anything to lie about. But the fact that he tried to mislead that kind of late gives a little bit more credence to the fact that Drake had nothing. Drake had zero. This was a hail mary. This was a prayer. They were wishing, hoping that this can go away. But not too much because, you know, Jay Prince still wants to use this to sell his book. He's going to hit a lot more audiences if when he's going, wherever he's going to try to push his book, they can talk a little bit of Drake. Let's be honest here. Drake is the biggest name as far as celebrity is concerned in this whole fiasco. Between the three men, Drake, uh, Prince, and Pusha. So for everybody that comes into the comment section and they're like, well, nobody knew about Pusha until, the first of all, people rock. <laughs> Pusha has his fans that aren't going anywhere. He also has endorsement deals. Just because he's not Drake rich, it does, uh, he might even be rich than Drake. Not for, I don't know, because you got to look at it like this. Drake pie gets cut so many different ways. If Pusha Pie doesn't get cut as many different ways, you know, he might be richer than him, but he has to do a lot more work. I mean, I don't know. Maybe not. If he's not even writing his own raps, how much work is he really doing, right? I'm going to have to take that back. But the point being, <laughs> oh, man. The point simply being, Pusha T is not a slouch. He has money. He has fans. He's not going anywhere. Just because you don't know about Pusha T, that doesn't mean that there's not a millions of people who aren't Pusha T fans, okay? Who fuck with Pusha T. So please stop it. People acting like Pusha T's a nobody. You see how far that got Nicki Minaj, right? When she was trying to act like Remy was a nobody? You know? That was the beginning of her downfall. I actually did a video um, right when that beef started, about how Remy Ma can't take Nicki Minaj's spot because of the, you know, she can't take her fans because of the different type of genres or the different type of music that they put out, and in that same video, I spoke about how Cardi B was going to end up taking Nicki Minaj's spot, and lo and behold, whatever, these things happen, man, anyway, let me know what y'all think about this. Like, I think, okay, do y'all think that Jay Prince was purposely trying to mislead people so they don't look weak? You know, it looks weak when, you know, if he comes out and says, you know, we just had to call them up because we had to end this. We couldn't take this type of hit. Now, that looks weak, but by saying... Well, you know, Drake had this killer track. It was going to end everybody's career. Now you don't look weak. But if track does not exist, 
or even if the track does exist, but you never told good music about the track, do they now look weak? Leave it in the comment section. I want to know what y'all guys think about this. Like, comment, subscribe. Join the notification gang. Hashtag Bronx Bombers. Let's get it. I love y'all. Take care of each other. Hug the kids for me. And that's all I got on this one. I'm out. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button.